Law is a professional degree. As a result, it is seldom funded. Most law schools would not give you money to do their master's or their PhD in law. And because law is a professional degree, it is quite expensive to go to law schools, either for your master's or for your PhD. However, I have made a successful discovery. I have found about four schools in the United States of America and in Canada, schools that can offer you fully funded scholarships to study their master's or their PhD in law. So join me in today's episode to see what these schools can offer you should you decide to study their master's or their PhD and to know or learn if these schools are right for you. Come on in. Hi, I'm Chris and you're welcome to this episode on Chris O. For those of you who are returning viewers, thank you always for always tuning in. Your viewership is a source of a huge source of encouragement. So the four schools we are going to be looking at the funding they have in their law school for their masters and their PhD in law are York University in Ontario, Canada. McGill University in Montreal, University of Berkeley in the United States of America, and the University of British Columbia in British Columbia, Canada. So let's get started with York University. So the name of the law school in York University is Osgood Hall Law School. In fact, I was surprised to come across this. In fact, this school wowed me. And they have good funding, they have good program, and they are one of a kind. So let's see what they can offer in funding. Okay. So if you go to their funding page, um, for international master students, you'll be paying $6,567 Canadian dollars per term. And for your PhD, the same thing goes around that same price goes for the PhD for international students. So what is their funding like? So for international students doing their research masters, LLM, they will be giving you minimum or base funding. You, they will be giving you 19,256 Canadian dollars. So that is the minimum funding they have. And then for the PhD, they'll be giving you around $36,218 per year. That is enough to pay your tuition and to and for living one year living expenses. So that is that for Osgood Hall Law School. They have other kinds of fellowships and external scholarships that you can apply. And since this school is in Ontario, you can as well, if you are doing your master's, you can as well apply for the Ontario Graduate Scholarship. And there is different other kinds of scholarship that you can apply in this school. So obviously have this school in your list of schools that you'll be applying to. So let's see what it will require to apply to this school. First and foremost, um, Application fee is $130 Canadian dollars and application opens around mid-October. So to apply, these are the criteria they listed. The applicants must have good grades and scholarly awards, merit of applicants research proposal and outline. So you'll be submitting your research proposal and outline research capacities and potential as demonstrated by previous academic writing and qualification. So you'll be showing them your academic um, writing sample and your, you know, other kind of stuff you've done in the field. So quality and strength of letters of recommendation and alignment of proposed research outline with faculty's interest and capacity for supervision. So if you're applying to this school, you would have, of course, the area you want to work in. Make sure that whatever it is you want to work in, there is a faculty member in the school that is also doing the same thing or has an area of interest 
the thing you are interested in. So to apply for this program, here are the things you would need. A transcript, a writing sample, two letters of academic recommendation, resume or curriculum vitae, statement of interest or research proposal, then supplemental information form. I think that would be like the online application form. So that is that for Osgood Law School in York University. So before I move to the second school, something I failed to mention for the Osgood Hall Law School that in the York University is the fact that you do not necessarily need to have a maybe a law degree beforehand to apply to their master's in law or their PhD in law. You do not need to have, they have concessions made for people who do not have a background in law. But to be amongst these people that can be admitted to in this, through this path, you must have real good reasons to be applying to their law school without a law degree. So I just thought I should mention that, okay? So, for the second school on our list is the McGill University. McGill University has so many different sources of funding for their law school. For one, you can apply to the McCall McBain Scholarship. I've already made a video about the McCall McBain Scholarship at the McGill University. This school, this particular award gives you $2,000 per month in living stipend and and it pays your full tuition, covers your health insurance and your travel expenses. So, and it is for the law school, for the LLM, for the master's in law. You can apply to the master's in law and if you're applying to this program, you must have, in fact, if you're applying to all law scholarship, you must have um, community experience, community stroke, community leadership stroke, uh, volunteer experiences. You must also have professional um, professional experiences. And then, of course, those things to bump your chances, okay? And then the Magu McBain Scholarship, is the deadline is next week, I think, on the 24th of August. So if you are looking to apply this year, know that the de deadline is on the 24th of August, I think next week or so. So if you go to their funding website, they, are, they have different kind of scholarship. So first and foremost, they have their base minimum funding they offer to their graduate students. So if you are doing the doctorate in law, they will be giving you the, the, the promise four years of guaranteed funding. So which covers 20,000, um, um, which covers your tuition and then they also said they provide 20,000 Canadian dollars of guaranteed funding for living expenses, 5,000 5, per year for four years. So, and then plus a potential 39,000 of supplemental funding spread across a four year period. So this is really good. And then this is the minimum funding and then LLM's candidate do not have minimum funding as the PhDs, minimum guaranteed funding as the PhDs um, doctorate student do. However, LMS, LLM student, that the master student can apply for the McBeal McCall scholarship. There are other kinds of different scholarship as well that you can apply. The Law Entrance Fellowship with a competitive selection process. You do not need to apply to this one separately. You will be considered automatically when you apply for your um, scholarship, when you apply for to this department, right? And then they have this scholarship. There's another one in disciplinary work on health-related topics. This department particularly has a bioethics and law. Law, I don't know, the bioethics program or health-related law. If you're doing a law degree that has a master's in law that has a focus on health, health related topics, then you, you can start to win up to 5,000 um, for doctoral student and 2,500 for the master's student. And then most importantly, we've arrived at the most important 
Another big funding for this program is the O'Brien Fellowships for Human Rights and Legal Pluralism. So if you are if your law research is if your law degree research is focused on human rights and legal pluralism in the faculty of law, you, you qualify to apply for this. You are eligible to apply for this funding. The deadline is on the 20th. And um, there's no citizenship um, restriction. So anyone can apply from Africa, Asia, wherever you come from, you can apply for this program. And then you must already have be registered for their LLM, their master's degree in law for their DC, their doctoral degree in law. There is no restriction based on citizenship, as I said, and this is selection criteria, academic excellence, good GP, of course, originality of the proposed research in the field of human rights and legal pluralism, availability of supervision in the faculty of law, diversity of candidates and topics. So um, you must make sure that what you, the particular thing you are working on, there is a faculty member in the school that can supervise you. And then the value of this scholarship is 35,000 per annum for doctoral student and 25,000 per annum for master's student. So this is mouthwatering. <laughs> the funding is good. So what you need to apply to this, um, to this program, to this law school. Um, so you need a research proposal is sacrosanct so you must be able to secure a supervisor and your research proposal must be submitted before the, before december 20th and the deadline for application is december 1st for llm and dcl programs and then other things you would need are letters of recommendation of course two letters of recommendation transcripts and then your cv that is that for this school yeah they do not require gre yeah so we are now down to the third school on our list and it is the university of berkeley in california united states of america this school has so many funding and we're going to settle down to look at this these funding at this school and they have different programs they have the gsd which is like um a professional is it a professional doctor <laughs> it's just a doctorate that you would need um that you will need to have the law degree the doctor of jurisprudence degree first before you can do this one it is a three-year program and then they have the PhD in, juris, in jurisprudence and social policy, so which is another kind of research degree. So let's see the kind of funding they have. So a normal master's in law at this university costs around 73,000 US dollars. And it is really difficult to find one funding, like one funding that can cover that amount of money plus you know stipend and you know living stipend and the rest however they have so many scholarships that you can that you are eligible to apply for all of them you know so this one can cover your tuition and then another one can cover your stipend so let us look at one of such scholarships and this one is african legal impact scholarship this scholarship offers you full tuition award for students from Africa. So if you're from Africa, you qualify and it is based on academic merit and a statement of intention describing what the scholarship recipient plans on accomplishing in Africa after graduating from the laws, from the masters in law will be required. And this particular kind of law is like, um, this particular master's is the executive track master's which is like a professional master's in law and yeah so the deadline is a complete application to the master's executive track received no later than november 1st remote plus summer option so this program is done online and then you go to the you go to california during um summer so then you would need you would need your transcripts and letters of recommendation to apply for this program 
So they said they cover your tuition seven three thousand page. However, you will cover your one thousand deposit and then plus travel and living expenses. So remember, this math particular masters is professional masters. For those in research degree, there are other kinds of masters, other kinds of scholarship that you can apply for. They have the dean's master scholarship, which is also partial award for students with superior merit. So this is it. They have the Boxum Fellowship, which is also partial award. They have the Henry W. and Nettie Robinson Fellowship, which is a partial award for students. And then Professor Richard Boxbone Scholarship, which is also partial award. So you can combine all these things to fund your education in this school. So in particular, um, there is this one for Global Risk Scholarship, which is which there are some countries that can apply for this one. This, the schools are there. And then they have the so any country you come from, they have you, you know you you stand to benefit from this scholarship. Then if you, they have this Young Lawyer Scholarship, which is worth 10000 So if you have practiced before, and if you have been practicing like lawyers who finish school and you have been working at least for some time, then want to go for your master's, then you stand to gain 10000 So they have different funding. So their doctoral program is fully funded. Their PhD in jurisprudence and social policy is fully funded. And then their um, jurisprudence, a doctor of jurisprudence, JSD, is also funded, fully funded. So the problem is the masters, which you have to, you know, get uh, funding from different, um, apply to different scholarship, all the scholarship they have. Remember. You don't need to submit separate application. You will be considered for this scholarship. So let us look at what would be required from potential applicant to this program. So if you want to apply to this program, you will need the following. Of course, the online form, application fee. How much is application fee? It is $80 per application. So you will need your personal statement. I've talked about what personal statement is in my videos. So other materials you will need is official transcript, of course, letters of recommendation and video assessment if you're applying for the executive masters. Then for the PhD, in addition, you will need a research proposal, a quality writing sample, and then um, a research, yeah, a quality writing sample, and then uh, the an agreement form that would be signed by your potential supervisor so you must secure a supervisor first before you apply to their phd program so remember it is fully funded yeah that is that for the law school at the berkeley university the final school on our list today is the university of british columbia um they have the name of their law school is the peter alert law school and here is their funding normally to study in this program you will need for international students you will need about nine thousand five hundred to pay for a term and a year has three terms so you'll be paying about eight thousand in in um in tuition for international students so Mostly for this school, they have their minimum funding, base minimum funding is five between five thousand to twenty-three thousand, you know, which covers your tuition, the entrance scholarship, scholarships and award. They also have this one for doctoral student that covers your full tuition and then pays you eighteen thousand two hundred in living expenses for four years. This is guaranteed. So there are, of course, other kinds of funding at the University of British Columbia, Peter Allard School of Law that you can benef benefit from, right? So to apply to this program, what do you need? You will need um, your CV, 
you will need your scans or two scans you need scans of your official transcript you will need english language proficiency of course those who studied with english language are exempted from this requirement then you will need a dissertation proposal and propose dissertation supervisors three reference three references academic references or whatever three letters of recommendation and then immigration document probably your international passport so that is that for the university of british columbia's peter allard school of law before i conclude here are my further tips for those who want to apply for scholarships in law things you should be looking out to prepare for have a good writing sample if you have published it to be good to help you more and if you have had work experience maybe one or two years of working experience which is not necessary but if you have it it will give you like it will boost your chances right and then you must have good academic results of course you know at least two one i don't know how they calculate law school grades but at least two one and then above and beyond all these other things extracurricular experiences that you must have in your bag to apply for these programs are community services what are community services things like volunteering attending organizing conferences organizing workshops and things to help people things like that depending on your field if you are practicing maybe you have organized law school is it clinics i don't know what you call it in law school right so you need also to have leadership experiences of course some some of the things you've done through your community experiences can serve as leadership experiences and then thirdly you know by way of um you could have prof like i said professional experiences community services and then leadership experiences so and you can gain leadership experiences from community experiences okay friends this is what i have in today's episode if you enjoyed this episode don't forget to like share and subscribe and i am grateful that you are here and i am hopeful to see you next week bye bye